This is easily one of the year's hottest, sexiest, best looking, weird, disgusting, nasty, ridiculous, wild, messy films I didn't see in all year. Let's talk about it. What is going on everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be sharing with you all my review of the brand new film Saltburn, a film I was very much looking forward to checking out. I had heard some of the mixed things coming out of the film festivals, got a chance to see it and here we are talking about it in today's spoiler free review. But first, let's start talking in the comments. Let me know if this is a film you all had circled on your calendar, but more importantly once you've seen it, let's talk about the things that worked, that didn't work. What did you think about the direction, the story, the performances? Were you grossed out by certain things? Were you disappointed by the film? And do you think this is one of the best films of the year? Let's talk about all that in the comments below. So let's kick things off by talking about the director and writer. We're talking about Emerald Fresnel, who of course this is her follow-up to 2020's Academy Award winner for Best Original Screenplay, Promising Young Woman, a film I was very much a fan of. It was in my top 10 of that year. Here she is back again, and there's a lot of things I noticed about her second outing as a director. Two things stood out. Number one, the confidence level is just all the way there in this film, but also she's having a black Last, playing in this world she created that's filled with wealth, lies, and sexual desires. This is definitely more of a stylistic approach to this type of story, more so than it was in A Promising Young Woman, and it has way more wild and crazy things going on, but I'm just glad to see a director like her being experimental, taking risks, even if some of it doesn't work, versus being like very stereotypical or very predictable. I was very surprised by how twisted and dark this movie became as it went along, but I can't believe they actually showed certain things in this film, let alone seeing it with a group of people. Like there are some wild things that I just never thought I would see in a theater with other people in this film. Like again, she takes risks. Some of it works better than others, but again, I just appreciate a director doing something different and not just sticking to the script. But also wanna highlight, this is one of the best looking films I've seen all year. Great use of colors. The camera work is just amazing. The production done is next level. And I'm telling y'all right now, the way that it captures this sense of like, you feel like you're like in a fever dream. It's a really well, beautiful looking film. There's a scene that I'm thinking of now where it's just like, they put these red curtains up and it's just like they're in this red room that sets the tone, that sets the mood, that plays perfectly of what just happened previously. So this is a gorgeous looking movie. And switching gears, and talking a little bit about the story here to me the film didn't really get that interesting until we get to a certain point and that's when we arrive to Saltburn. that to me is where it really works because it feels like it's a fish out of water with this dark comedy approach about being amongst the rich people and how they operate and i really enjoyed how the film kind of handled the cattiness and the unnecessary drama and the gossip from these family members and all the lies and how it affects the people surrounding them and at that point and onward is where the film really becomes and transforms forms into this dark twisted psychological thriller which to me as I'll talk about a little bit later the first 45 minutes to an hour really wasn't for me but again once we get to Saltburn once we kind of establish this fish out of water this group of people that we're following and then it makes another shift I like that side of the portion again the second half and the ending is where the film completely shines but speaking of shining we got to talk about these great performances and starting off with Felix's family we have Rosamund Pike who shines in every single frame she's in I personally wish she was in the movie a little bit more but I really like what she brought to the table we also have Felix's dad who's played by Richard E. Grant he's always great in everything I've seen him in but then as someone that I wasn't too familiar with is the sister of Felix and that's Allison Oliver who I was very impressed by her ability to be able to switch the level of the emotions that this character has so the family was wild they were ridiculous but I like the pack that we have here but also there's some other secondary characters that I really enjoyed in this film such as I will never Never say no to seeing Carrie Mulligan pop up in the film. I really enjoyed her character. But also, we have Archie Adekwe, who plays the cousin in this film. I thought he was fine. Like, as the film went on, I didn't really care too much about what he was doing in the plot. But I've been a fan of Archie since seeing him in C on Apple TV Plus and just seeing him kind of grow as his actor. In this film, like I said, he was okay. But I think about earlier this year with the Gran Turismo. So, a lot of the supporting cast really did a good job. But the standouts to me, starting off with Jacob Alorhe, who's Speaking of just watching people grow, he plays a character in this film by the name of Felix, and I've always just really enjoyed what he brings to the screen. Again, I've been seeing him since he first popped up on the Kissing Booth films, which were terrible, but 
villain, seeing him transition into TV with Euphoria as one of the most worst, best villains on TV with Jacob's character. But then him in this film, he's really great. He really leans into his character and he's like that stereotypical, every man wants to be him, every woman wants to sleep with him, every guy wants to sleep with him. Like he plays that role really well. But the standout, the MVP, the scene stealer is Barry Kino. Like he's the reason why you watch this movie. He absolutely is committed to this very strange, odd, bizarre character by the name of Oliver. He is definitely taking a page from his role in the killing of a sacred deer. And he's playing this seamlessly innocent, harmless guy who just happens to befriend the most popular and rich student in the school. And he is phenomenal in this movie. Like seriously, there are just moments where you're just like, Dude, he is easily one of the best up and coming actors in this generation. Like he, like I really mean it, he commits to this role. Everything is in this movie. Like Barry is fantastic in this film. But those are my main positives. I got some issues with this film. Getting to my criticisms here, I talked about the direction being so good, but Emerald's script to me just kind of fails this movie because it really doesn't explore the character's mindset. I just wish we could have dove deeper into the mindset of these characters regarding their sexuality, where their anger stems from, where their jealousy stems from, and definitely felt like, to me, this had more of a style over substance conversation. Like, this is a beautiful looking film, and there are some interesting character stuff that's working but I just wish and knowing that Emerald wrote this and how well she did that in Promising Young Woman and also you know Killing Eve she's a great writer and she does great job of focusing on characters and what ticks them off and all that stuff but I just feel like she dropped the ball on really fleshing out these interesting characters and I touched on it earlier but the first 45 minutes to an hour just felt so slow very uninteresting all the school stuff just didn't work for me and then I'll mention this once things kind of hit the fan and kind of go south when we get more into the psychological logical thrilling aspects of the film the logic kind of went out of the window what I mean by that is and once you see the film you'll know exactly what I'm talking about but once ish hits the fan like why weren't the cops being like wow that's very odd that this person who just came out of nowhere and people are starting to be affected by his presence that they wouldn't start to question things and, and to look into things so like some of the logical choices especially towards the last like 20 minutes which I love the ending but again the logic was just kind of thrilling thrown out at that point in the film. And again, while I thought the last 45 minutes were the best parts of the film, there was this moment where the film has the most obvious twist reveal that I thought was heavily implied in my eyes, but they have this moment where it's like, oh, this has been going on since the very beginning type of moment. I'm like, wait, you? I thought it, like, it was one of those things where I wish where the filmmaker would have said, hey, I'm implying this, I'm hinting at this, but I'm not gonna show you what actually happened. Like, I wish it was almost one of those, leave it up to your imagination, questioning was this person doing this, that, and the other versus showing us that. Like, I was like, that was pretty obvious that <laughs> this was what was going on from the beginning, but the film takes a moment in the film where it's like, oh, we got you, right? Like, there's a lot of moments where I feel like the film thought it was a lot smarter than what it actually was. Now, this is the part of my review where this isn't a positive or a negative. This is just a discussion I wanna have with you all in the comments below. When you all see the film, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about, but there are three, but really two scenes that I thought more so played to the shock value versus actually playing into the actual what was going on in the film. Like, all I'll say is, and again, just in case you're like, well, I wonder what he's talking about, you'll know, but just to give you a hint, I'm talking about the bathtub scene and the grave scene. You know what I'm talking about when you see it. I thought those were ridiculous. Like, that was some of the craziest things I've seen in a movie probably ever. Like, especially, like, a film with Academy Award winning directors and actors. Like, I'm like, this is weird, and I'm watching this with other people in the room. It's meant to make you feel uncomfortable. Like, I get the point of what they were going for, but I'm like... That is strange, man. <laughs> Let me know what you all thought about those two scenes that I just mentioned in the comments below. But hey, before I give you all my overall score and let you know if I think this is worth checking out, if you stuck around to this point in the review, I want to take the time to thank you, yes you, for watching the video. Consider hitting the like button, sharing today's review, leaving your thoughts in the comments, and of course, consider subscribing to the channel. Overall, Saltburn is a dark and twisted cross between Cruel Intentions meets the talented Mr. Ripley, but with a super weird twist. Emerald Fresnel is having a fun time creating this world filled with wealth, live, and sexual desires, and she complements it with a beautifully well-crafted movie.
Barry Kino delivers one of his best performances of his young career, and he completely commits to this role. The film didn't really do much for me until we arrived to a certain point, which was at Saltburn. That's where you get the more incredibly jaw-dropping, disgusting stuff that happens that will definitely leave a lot of people talking. I just wish that I loved this film more than I did, and I was really kind of disappointed by the first 45 minutes to an hour, but again, thankfully, the second half and the last 20 minutes was when the film was at its absolute best. This will no doubt get under your skin for better or for worse and will leave you feeling even sick or maybe just uncomfortably horny. I'm going to give Saltburn a 3.5 out of 5 and that score has went up since I saw the film a couple nights ago. Like when I first saw it, I have my out of theater reaction on the channel. If you follow me on X, you can see my initial thoughts, but after I slept on it, like, okay, I appreciate it. Like, it's a gorgeous looking film. I like the direction. I love the performances. The story kind of lets it down. I wish it was more development. But again, I have come to appreciate a little bit more. I don't know if I'll be watching it and again anytime soon, just like based on some things that happened. But I can say there are definitely more positives and negatives for me versus when I first saw it. I came to kind of appreciate it just a little bit more. Again, 3.5 out of 5. But hey, that's my thoughts on Saltburn. I want to know yours in the comments below. Pros, cons, favorite moments, least favorite moments, performance direction. Let me know your thoughts on those scenes and let me know if you think this is one of the best films that you've seen all year in the comments below. I want to thank you again for watching today's video. Just a friendly reminder to like, share, comment with leaving your thoughts on the film in the comments. And of course, consider subscribing to the channel. You all are awesome. Hope you're staying safe and I'll catch you all on the next video.